Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Mundell, and I welcome you today on behalf of the whole team supporting the Laudato Si Action Platform. We're always so inspired to be connected with all of you from around the world, knowing that there are so many people and organizations who are interested in putting integral ecology into practice in our daily lives, whether it's individuals, dioceses, religious communities, or other organizations and institutions. I invite you to introduce yourselves if you haven't yet in the chat with your name, your country, and your diocese or organization. I'm calling today from Indianapolis, Indiana in the United States, acknowledging that my city is located on the traditional and ancestral territory of the Miami, Potawatomi, and Shawnee people. We honor the heritage of native peoples throughout the world, what they teach us about the stewardship of the earth and their continuing efforts today to protect our planet. So feel free to honor those Native peoples who call or have called your lands home by naming them in the chat as well. The Laudato Si Action Platform is a program of the Vatican's Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, supported by the Laudato Si Movement as its global operational partner, and built together with the input and contribution of many organizations around the world who are working with us to foster a culture and practice of integral ecology, and many are present here today. Its, aimed, its aim is to bring its participants along a journey of assessment, reflection, planning, and goal implementation toward greater inter integral ecology, where we respond to both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. We've really been looking forward to today's program and the speakers who will bring us insights on the crucial role of church leaders in ecological conversion. This is a third in a how-to series aimed at offering you concrete support on how to interact with the platform how to involve your diocese, institutions, schools, hospitals, and communities, and have a chance to interact with other platform participants through community meetings immediately following our webinars. If you missed our January and February webinars on how to get involved in the Laudato Si Action Platform and what to expect, and how to set up and carry out your Laudato Si plan, you can find those recordings on our YouTube channel, along with many other resources. Now for, for a few practical announcements before we begin. If you need translation, we are offering translations in Spanish, Italian, French, and Portuguese. You can access them through the interpretations button at the bottom of your screen. So click the interpretations button and then choose your language, Spanish, Italian, French, or Portuguese. This webinar is being recorded and live streamed on YouTube. Only our designated speakers will be visible, and we hope you will save the YouTube link to rewatch or share later. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them by clicking the Q&A button at any time. Any question put in the regular chat may get lost, so please use the Q&A button and we'll answer as many as we can. And finally, thank you for helping us build this global community together today. We ask that any chat participation be on topic and in a spirit of respect and openness. If you'd like to look at our netiquette guidelines, which you agreed to in your registration, you can find them at the link in the chat. Before we continue, I invite communications manager for the Laudato Si Action Platform, Stephen Salido, to leave it, lead us in an opening prayer. Stephen has roots in Chicago and Mexico City, holds a University of Notre Dame BA in political science and peace building, which led to studies in Kolkata, Sarajevo, and Jerusalem. From working in migrant shelters to disaster relief in Alaska, his professional training is rooted in hospital chaplaincy with a multi-faith theological degree at Harvard. He is on the Laudato Si Movement Special Projects team as the communications manager by his work on the Laudato Si Action Platform. So Stephen, I'll pass the mic to you. Thank you, Sarah. I invite everyone to take a deep breath and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us begin our prayer by taking a moment to honor and appreciate those who have guided us to this journey. As we take this time to reflect, let us remember the people who have inspired us into inspiring others, supported us into supporting others, and loved us into loving others. I invite everyone to take one silent minute to remember these people.
Thank you for sharing that moment of silence together. In this moment, we express our deepest gratitude for those who have led with kindness, inspired with their actions, and loved us as a community. Their leadership has empowered us to become leaders in our own right, rooted in love and compassion. As we continue on our path, let us strive to embody the same love and leadership that has been shown to us. May we be the guiding light for others, just as others have been for us. And may our actions be a reflection of the love and gratitude we hold in our hearts. Together, let us commit to leading with love and making a positive difference in the lives of those around us as we create a world filled with empathy and understanding. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. This year we address a more practical way to engage with the platform and involve people in carrying out the Laudato Si plans that we're creating. And we're following the C Judge Act method. We'll look at today's challenges along the path to integral ecology, consider them in light of the rich social teaching of the Catholic Church, and as Pope John XXIII said, to read the signs of the times and discern together how to translate what we've understood into concrete goals and actions that promote justice and transform the world around us. We're on this journey with you, so hopefully we can continue to develop our webinars in a way that's helpful to everyone. Uh, in light of this mo model, today's speakers include Laudato Si Action Platform Director John Mundell, who will talk about the ways the platform supports church leaders in taking ecological action and share about the impact it has when local church leaders are involved. Then we have a special greeting from Bishop Alwyn De Silva, who is the Vicar General for the Archdiocese of Bombay, India, and Father Patricio Enrique Sarlat Flores, who is the Officer for Reflection and Research in the area of Integral Ecology for the Vatican's Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development. Then we hope to have a moment for brief questions and answers before some announcements. Everyone is then invited to follow this month's community meeting that immediately follows the webinar. It will be on a separate Zoom call, so you need to register for it. If you still want to register, you can do so at the link provided right now in the chat. We look forward to continuing our discussion there and getting to know one another even better. So now I'll pass the microphone on to our director, John Mundell. Greetings, everyone. Today, we are going to spend some time discussing the importance of the Laudato Si Action Platform in helping our church leaders, from bishops to priests to lay people, to begin the process of ecological conversion by accepting the challenge to take action to protect our common home. But let's start first with the elephant in the room. Most of us know that not every diocese and parish in the world has fully embraced Pope Francis's Laudato Si message since its publication in 2015 and made it a priority. To date, we have less than 10% of our 2,900 dioceses in the world signed up to the platform, so we still have a long way to go, but the momentum is building. How can signing up on the platform help? Well, there are many challenges we face in engaging church leadership, but the Laudatsi Action Platform can provide practical support to address those challenges. So what are they? The challenge of not knowing. Many people, including priests and bishops, were not taught about the environment and ecology in their schools or seminaries and find themselves ill-equipped to speak about it. The platform and its members provide a thousand easy to use resources to educate and address both, both the science and theological basis for action. The challenge of apathy. Some leadership have not yet made room for or experienced an ecological spirituality in their own lives, even though it has been part of church teaching since the beginning. Participation in the platform connects our faith to a different kind of lifestyle that deepens our experience and leads to a more holistic view of living the gospel. The challenge of overcoming inertia, keeping things as they are or maintaining the status quo 
is often seen as the easiest way of dealing with church overload. Responding to Laudato Si can be seen as something extra that is being added to the workload of the clergy on top of everything else. Let's just keep things as they are, many priests might say. Overcoming this inertia can be eased by consulting the many resources and examples of programs and actions on the platform to show that it is possible to integrate ecological action into existing programs and to not start from scratch. The challenge of resource limitations. Many dioceses and parishes already have existing programs that require paid staff time and financial budgets to support them. Programs that include creation care most often are not given paid staff support or a financial budget. The platform and its success stories can demonstrate the positive effects of adding resources on the local community, including better youth engagement, financial savings, and a rejuvenation of, youth, of church ministries. Sharing brings hope of the possible. And finally, the challenge of politicalization. In some areas of the world, the environment has been made into a political position rather than a moral position and part of Catholic social teaching. The platform can help create an awareness among leadership of how to address this tension. The more creation care is discussed throughout the entire church, the more those political positions can change for the better. And so let's hope our two church leaders here today will speak today and give us their perspective on caring for our common home and what each of us can do to support the journey to e ecological conversion. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. This is an important topic and the local situation is unique and different uh, with different challenges and opportunities in that dialogue. In fact, some of the most common questions we receive from participants and friends of the platform involve their interactions with bishops, parish priests, and other church leaders, uh, and some have very supportive leadership and others struggle in that communication, as we just heard. So I know our listeners today are quite interested in what will be shared. It's now my honor to introduce our two speakers who can give some insight to those questions. His Excellency Bishop Alwyn de Silva and Father Patricio Enrique Sarlat Flores. We've invited them here because of their roles in and with church leadership at local and international levels. Bishop Alwyn de Silva chairs the Climate Change Desk at the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences and the Environment and Climate Change Office of the Catholic Bishops Conference of India. He also founded the Commission for Ecology for the Conference of Catholic Bishops of India, serving as exal serving as Auxiliary Bishop of Bombay from 2017 to 2023, he now oversees the Social Apostolate as Vicar General. He holds a postgraduate degree in political science and has spent 40 years teaching human rights, social realities, human rights, social realities, conflict transformation, and ecology, with numerous publications and presentations on this topic. Father Patricio Enrique Sarlat Flores is a diocesan priest from Yucatan, Mexico, and is the Officer of Research and Reflection in Integral Ecology at the Vatican's Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, where he now resides in Rome. He has held significant roles, including Diocesan Coordinator for Social Pastoral Care, Executive Sector Secretary of the Episcopal Com Commission for Social Pastoral, National Director of Mexican Caritas, and coordinator for Caritas Comex for the Caribbean and Mexico. Notably, he founded and led the Mesoamerican Ecological Ecclesial Network, REMAM, since 2019, and contributed to international climate advocacy with Caritas Internacionales at COP16, COP17, COP20, and COP21. So Bishop De Silva and Father Patricio, we look forward to hearing about your experience and why it's so important to have church leadership support in the work towards integral ecology. Now I'll quickly remind our participants that you can submit your questions in the Q&A section at any time during the presentations. We'll answer as many as we can directly, and we'll start now with a video message from Bishop De Silva.
Dear friends of Mother Earth, greetings of peace and hope to all of you. To me, your presence here at this webinar is a clear demonstration of your commitment to ecological stewardship, which is not possible without an ecological conversion. Therefore, in my sharing, I would like to focus more on leadership. So, my dear friends, what is leadership? Once during the induction of parish priests, I quote a paper which states that leadership, like beauty, is difficult to define. We are in the digital age and we find out what we want to know by going online. So if you search online for leadership definition, the search engine will give you multiple similar but no universal result. However, though it is difficult to define leadership, I think you will all agree that good leadership is easy to sense. We can discern fairly easily whether a person is a good leader or not. And in the absence of good leadership, something feels amiss. This is because good leader is one who inspires trust and changes people and the environment. Be that of an organization, a parish, a congregation, a diocese, a country, or any group or institution. Now it is important to note that this change brought about by a good leader isn't necessarily for the better or for the common good. We can note this throughout history and in our times as well. Dictators, environmental destroyers, all have been good leaders who may have won their people's trust but brought about bad changes, inciting hatred, causing discord, denying climate change, causing mass loss of life. Leaders therefore bear a great responsibility of not leading people astray. To quote from Luke 12, 48, from everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required, and from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. With this in mind, let us turn to Jesus, who was a great leader. We take note of four aspects of Jesus' leadership and examine whether we match up to these as church leaders. First, he stimulated people's hearts and minds. When Jesus was ministering, he was surrounded by crowds. They would not have stayed if he couldn't stimulate their minds and hearts. They found him refreshingly inspiring among the humdrum of daily life. Those who walked away did so because they found his teaching too hard or un palatable. But even their leaving is a response to the stimulus of their hearts and minds being touched. They left because they couldn't bear to be shaken up. In our ecological ministry, my dear friends, this is what we must be doing. We must be inspiring and make people think. I began my pastoral work in the slum communities of Mumbai, advocating for their human rights and basic necessities, nutritious food, adequate water, livable housing, sustainable livelihoods. I helped in establishing community centers where they could come together and be empowered. They were inspired and together we rediscovered 
the links between dignity, justice, and the environment. From people at the peripheries who are struggling to survive, to people who are at the pinnacle of success, no change can be brought about if, if their hearts are not touched and their minds not stimulated. The second aspect is that Jesus championed values that drove his leadership. The values of forgiveness and mercy that Jesus advocate, advocated and lived by were God's standards. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Luke 6, 27 and 28. These are impossible to achieve by ourselves. Accepting these values meant realizing the need of Jesus the Savior. And therefore having stimulated their hearts, Jesus was able to get the people to accept values that probe hearts and direct towards God. As a church leader, one value that I have begun to champion is that of reconciliation with creation. Thanks to Laudato Si, we are now aware of the ecological sin, but we must be doing a lot more to mend the rupture with creation. When was the last time we touched the soil with humility or embraced a tree with gratitude? Have we asked forgiveness for our ecologically disruptive wastewater and our rubbish that is taking over the oceans? At the formation level, we have introduced ecological values and catechesis and eco-philosophy in the seminary for several years now. The Archdiocese Office for Environment in Mumbai conducts a, certific a certificate course for eco ambassadors every year, while the Loud Auto Sea Movement has its animators program. The Joint Diploma in Integral Ecology is now being offered online by the Pontifical Universities of Rome. May reconciliation with creation be a key dimension of our ecological stewardship. Thirdly, Jesus' leadership challenged the status quo to a degree never matched, matched in history. Jesus was a carpenter, born in a stable's inn. He lived as a migrant under colonial rule, subject to harsh taxes and legislations. He had a ministry of only three years before being sentenced to a criminal's gruesome death by crucifixion. He was buried quietly in a borrowed tomb. Despite all this, he was able to amass followers, call out religious hypocrisy, perturb authorities, and inspire a revolution of the heart that continues well over 2,000 years later. My dear friends, we are living in a crucial time in which we are shackled by the status quo of indifference and apathy while grappling with intolerance, instability, depleting resources, diminishing biodiversity, changing climates. It is imperative we act and we advocate. As leaders, let us engage with our communities to implement holistic and sustainable solutions. We can start off on a very small scale. I'll give an example from the last decade. St. John the Baptist Church in Thani, where I was parish priest and still reside in, is a heritage structure that is more than 500 years old. When we restored the church, we were one of the first parishes 
to install a high volume load speed, low speed fan. Known for energy efficiency, enhanced thermal control and noise reduction benefits. Several parishes in the diocese went on to do as well. When it comes to advocacy, while we must be prudent and, and cautious, it is here where we can have and make our impact. For example, you do not know whether my lifestyle is sustainable or not, but my support for the Laudato Sea Movement's fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty is in the public domain. During the crisis of COVID-19 pandemic, a draft legislation that relaxed, the regul that relaxed the regulatory framework of environmental impact assessment was notified in our country. Our Dyson Social Apostolate got together, called in experts to understand the implications, held awareness sessions, prepared a response which was circulated for us to sign in our individual capacities. And this was submitted to the relevant ministry within the deadline. We did all this online. In our respective capacities, we must challenge the status quo. The last aspect of Jesus' leadership I will touch upon today is that he was anchored by a transforming, transforming vision. His vision was to bring about the kingdom of heaven through the redemption of humankind and the reconciliation of all things to himself. This vision guided everything Jesus did. And all Jesus did was in accordance with his heavenly father. For us, Lord of the Sea puts forth a transforming and powerful vision of integral ecology, of cultivating holistic relationships between ourselves, the earth and its creatures, and with God. As church leaders, we are fortunate to have several ways to achieve this. The guidance of the Lord of the Sea Action Platform is, of, is offered to us freely. In Asia and in India, we are working towards the establishment of a national, subnational, and diocesan commissions or desk for ecology and creation care. Deep, depending on the local context, these may be integrated with existing justice, peace, and solidarity structures. To these four leadership aspects, I will add that as church leaders, we must also cultivate a passion for the ecological ministry and also be curious and daring to bring about change and overcome the many challenges we are about to face. We also have to be sensitive and responsive to the signs of the times. Again, during COVID lockdowns, we could not get together. In 2021, I launched a pan-Indian ecological movement that would help people to journey together online while sharing of their own local ecological initiatives. Once the pandemic eased, we had two in-person gatherings, and now the movement is transitioning into being a youth-led and eventually secular. My sharing would be remiss if I do not talk about the challenges of human and financial resources. I have been fortunate to know key people in Miserior and Cafford who share our ecological vision and fund our efforts. While we also work towards budgeting for creation, care from within the country and our dioceses, as a leader and presbyter, I am blessed to have my ministry supported by the talents of the local church. 
I need people of science to assist in shaping my ecological response. And I have a qualified subject matter consultant on my staff. However, we need more people to fructify our efforts. As we know, ecological conversion is both at the personal and community level. And it must be an ongoing process. There is no one and done approach. We must work together. To my brother bishops, I appeal to you to take on the vivifying role of authentic fraternity that the Synod on Synodality calls us to, making ecological stewardship a key, a key priority. To my fellow priests and church leaders, I hope we surmount the challenges of conflicting priorities enforce and implement creation care guidelines and initiatives, and welcome the talents of the laity. To my dear faithful, it is my hope that you continue to approach us and offer your talents, even though it is very difficult at times to convince us and the community to act. May we all grow in the understanding that ecological stewardship is a vital aspect of our, spirit, of our spirituality and our Christian faith. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, Bishop De Silva, for your message. Uh, your words encouraging us to have passion, to be curious, to recognize ecological stewardship as a vital aspect of our faith and as our, our practice um, is so important and is give, and gives hope for the journey. Now I'm going to invite Father Patricio to share some insights from his perspective at the Vatican Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development. A note for translations, Father Patricio will speak in Spanish. So our English and Spanish speakers will need to make a temporary technical change. Spanish speakers, please go down to the interpretations button and choose the off option so you can come to the main listening room. And our English speakers go down to the interpretations button and choose the Spanish option to hear the English translation just for this moment of listening to Father Patricio and then you can return to our main room. So, bienvenido Fad Padre Patricio. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Bueno, pues envío un saludo afectuoso desde el Dicasterio para el Servicio del Desarrollo Humano Integral aquí en, en Roma. Y la intervención que quiero hacer, saludo a todos los presentes, veo que hay muchas personas de muchas partes del mundo, así que buenos días, buenas tardes o buenas noches, según en la latitud del mundo que se encuentren. Pero unidos todos en la fe y unidos también con este deseo de llevar un mundo mejor. Eh, sobre el tema que me han pedido, yo quisiera tocar siete puntos. El primer punto es sobre el te, el, la noción de la conversión ecológica que el Papa Francisco explica abundantemente en Laudato Si, a partir del número 216, eh, habla ampliamente en el capítulo sexto, eh, a partir del número 216, de la conversión ecológica. Entiendo que el tema de la conversión tiene que ser con referencia a Cristo el Señor. Nuestra centralidad en el encuentro con Jesucristo, el Hijo de Dios. Y el Catecismo de la Iglesia Católica habla de un pecado ecológico que es la ruptura de la armonía creada por Dios. De eso vamos a hablar hacia el final de esta exposición. Solamente quería ponerlo como telón de fondo, porque 
el tema es el papel crucial de los líderes de la iglesia en la conversión ecológica. Por lo tanto, cuando se habla de conversión de este pecado ecológico, estamos hablando de una revisión de nuestras relaciones. En el fondo es un tema de relaciones. Nuestra relación con Dios como Padre, nuestra relación con los demás como hermanos, hermanas y hermanos, la fraternidad y la relación con los bienes, con, los, con lo creado, con la creación, con lo que Dios vio que era muy bueno y puso uh, en las manos del ser humano para que convivamos con la creación en esta interdependencia y con esta responsa corresponsabilidad o responsabilidad nuestra. Cuando hay un cambio en nuestro modo de intervenir, cuando no vemos a Dios como nuestro padre o como cuando nosotros nos ponemos en, en la cabeza y nos ponemos como los señores y cuando nuestras relaciones entre las personas humanas, entre los hermanos y hermanas se fracturan por el odio, por la división, por el egoísmo y cuando nuestra relación con la creación es una relación de abuso, es una relación de consumismo, es una relación de voracidad, entonces podemos decir que estamos rompiendo la armonía creada por Dios y entonces estamos hablando de un pecado ecológico. Esto es muy importante porque en, los, en, en la vida de la iglesia, los líderes de nuestra iglesia estamos llamados a proclamar esta, este anuncio de la conversión que dice el Papa Francisco en Laudato Si, que debe ser una, siguiendo el modelo de San Francisco de Asís, debe ser algo que experimente la misericordia, ¿no? eh, que se conjugan para movilizar un cuidado generoso y lleno de ternura. Bueno, esto lo, que, lo quiero poner como, como primer punto, insisto, al final voy a, a regresar a, a este tema. Como segundo punto... Hablar de la ecología integral, como el Papa Francisco nos la presenta, creo que es algo que todavía no hemos acabado de asumir, de entender, de comprender en profundidad. Fíjense, muchas buenas iniciativas desde los gobiernos, pasando por las organizaciones de la sociedad civil, y no pocas veces en comunidades eclesiales siguen siendo de corte ambientalista. Hay que resaltar, y esto es parte del, del, del servicio de los líderes de la iglesia en esa conversión ecológica, hay que resaltar la importancia de no perder lo integral de la ecología integral de no perder de vista que el planteamiento del Papa va mucho más allá de una ecología verde, sino que trata de ser holística, integral, atendiendo al ser humano, atendiendo a las relaciones, atendiendo a la dimensión espiritual, etc. Los siete objetivos, que pudieran ser también siete dimensiones de la Plataforma de Acción Social, de Acción Laudato Si, perdón, de la Plataforma de Acción Laudato Si, deben articularse. Además, nos conectan con los objetivos del desarrollo sostenible. Es un potencial 
muy poderoso. Tenemos que promoverlos y son muy prácticos. Pues si todas las comunidades católicas del mundo avanzamos en los planes laudato si, seremos una gran masa crítica que transformará la civilización en esa anhelada civilización del amor. Imagínense, hagamos un, una, un juego con nuestra memoria. Imagínense familias laudato si, escuelas laudato si, empresas laudato si, parroquias laudato si, diócesis laudato si, congregaciones religiosas laudato si, redes territoriales ecológicas laudato si, oficinas y centros de trabajo laudato si, restaurantes y hoteles laudato si, gobiernos y municipios laudato si. Qué importante es que desde la iglesia y desde los líderes de la iglesia se puedan ir proclamando, enseñando, anunciando con verdadero coraje estos siete objetivos o siete dimensiones que la Plataforma de Acción Laudato Si ofrece a la Iglesia y a los hombres y mujeres de buena voluntad. Esto lleva mucho a una conversión ecológica. Lleva mucho a una manera distinta de relacionarnos, o mejor dicho, nos ayudaría a relacionarnos como en el origen. Hay que tener cuidado de no banalizar los términos. No llamemos ecología integral a lo que no es. Esto debe ser, este debe ser el gran servicio de la iglesia al mundo. Este debe ser el gran servicio de la iglesia a los líderes de las naciones y al mismo pueblo de Dios. El cuidado de la casa común no es solo una causa ambientalista o tecnocrática, sino una visión más holística, más integral, más humana, más espiritual. Es un asunto de ecología integral. Solamente para recordar, porque seguramente ustedes ya los conocen, ¿verdad? los objetivos laudato sí, que pueden ser también dimensiones de la vida eh, y de esta integralidad. Respuesta al clamor de la tierra, respuesta al clamor de los pobres, economía ecológica, adopción de estilos de vida sostenibles, educación ecológica, espiritualidad ecológica y resiliencia y empoderamiento de la comunidad. Como está escrito en la plataforma la de acción laudato sí, estos siete objetivos brindan orientación sobre acciones urgentes e inmediatas que cada uno de nosotros puede tomar en el cuidado de nuestra casa común. Todos nosotros podemos cooperar como instrumentos de Dios para el cuidado de la creación. Cada uno según su propia cultura, experiencia, implicaciones y talentos como nos recuerda Laudato Si, número 14. Tercer punto, el poder. Hablamos de los líderes de la iglesia y hablamos también de los líderes en general, pero aunque ese tema está enfocado en los líderes de la iglesia, también aprovecho para hacer mención a los líderes de la comunidad mundial. Y un líder tiene poder. Y Jesucristo, el Señor, en el Evangelio, nos enseña que el poder es para servir. Lo que exigimos, lo que le exigimos a la ONU, debemos vivirlo sinodalmente en nuestras jurisdicciones eclesiásticas, en nuestras congregaciones religiosas, en nuestras comunidades católicas. 
Somos discípulos misioneros de aquel que no vino a ser servido, sino a servir. Es un poder que busca el bien común. Es un poder que busca dar testimonio del Dios de la vida y así alabar la audate deum, la audato si, dar gloria a Dios en la vida de los más pobres, entre ellos la pobre hermana tierra. Y con esto quisiera hacer referencia al capítulo quinto de la encíclica Laudato Si, que pone en diálogo este tema del de ambiente y la política internacional, el medio ambiente y la política nacional y la política local, que pone en diálogo política y economía para la plenitud humana y pone en diálogo a las religiones con las ciencias. En el fondo, hay un llamado a mantener un estilo de vida coherente, cotidiano, como forma también de denunciar ese modo de poder que está siendo mal utilizado. Entonces, como el papel de los líderes de la iglesia en la conversión ecológica está en el modo de en emplear el poder. Gracias, Muy padre. Si, si puede eh, concluir. Concluir. Muy Gracias. bien. Un elemento importante es el de la justicia, que me parece importantísimo. Cuando se habla de transición energética, se debe hablar de una transición justa, sustentable e integral. Los testimonios de los que viven en los territorios más biodiversos hablan de que hay una justicia social, una justicia ambiental, una justicia ecológica integral, una justicia climática. ¿Qué se está viviendo? Se puede, en efecto, se pueden dar pasos para sustituir a los combustibles fósiles pero no a costa de la vida de las comunidades que son ricas en, bi en biodiversidad. Aquí, con el pretexto de no usar combustibles fósiles, se está atentando contra los derechos humanos y los ecosistemas, convirtiendo las zonas bellas y ricas de nuestra casa común en zonas de sacrificio. Aquí hay otro llamado a la denuncia profética de las falsas soluciones. Eso también tiene que ser un trabajo de los líderes de la iglesia. Bueno, y de, finalmente la conversión se vive en los territorios locales, en las microcuencas hidrográficas hasta las redes territoriales. Ahí se vive en sino, la sinodalidad y el diálogo social, sobre todo los factores que integran la vida. Cada territorio, en cada territorio, las diversas comunidades católicas deben cooperar entre sí y dialogar con otras comunidades de fe y aliados de la sociedad civil desde una espiritualidad de la comunión. Y esto lo deben alentar los líderes católicos de la comunidad. Bueno, pues aquí, hasta aquí me quedo por tema de tiempo. Muchísimas gracias. Dios les bendiga. Muchísimas gracias a usted, Padre Patricio. Eh, esto es un, un tema muy importante y eh, es muy útil para nosotros escuchar tanto a usted como al obispo de Silva eh, sobre este pa papel esencial. Um, también porque es un, via un viaje posible. ¿no? Okay. So, thank you, Father, Father Patricio. Uh, you can't imagine how helpful it is for us to hear from you and uh, Bishop de Silva about this very important topic. Um, real quick, I'll ask our Spanish and English uh, listeners to switch back to their original channels, uh, English speakers going back to the off channel and Spanish speakers going back to the Spanish interpretation channel. Um, we tried to answer many questions during this time. Um, for sure, this is just the beginning of a discussion and uh, especially Some of you had some very good tips and practical ideas also about how you are trying to dialogue with your church leaders where you're at and also sharing some of the challenges. 
So if you can and are able to join us in this next uh, half hour, 45 minutes for the community meeting coming up, please do go to, we'll put that link in the chat here again soon. Please do join us for that time where you'll have time to talk with other participants about uh, how you are facing this, uh, facing and working with church leaders. Uh, real quick, um, thank you again today, everyone who was here, our translators and our technical team, all of you who joined from around the world. If you have not signed up to the Lodata Sea Action platform yet, or you would like to receive our newsletter, please do that by visiting www.lodatoseeactionplatform.org. Uh, participants, current participants, please don't forget, you can always upload your new version of your plans. Uh, we can now upload more than one calendar year so you can keep track of your progress. Uh, as uh, was mentioned before, there is the continued course on integral ecology from the Pontifical Universities. Um, and so if you Google, I'm sorry, this will be quick, online course on integral ecology from Laudato Si to Laudate Deum, uh, you can still join that course and uh, we'll send that out in the thank you note as well. So again, once again, if you want to join our community meeting, uh, please uh, join us. It's a separate link that you've received in a separate email from Zoom. And if you still would like to join us and haven't registered, you can at the link in the chat. We will begin in about 10 minutes and we look forward to seeing you there. Finally, one last note, uh, our next appointment is on April 4th for next month's webinar. And the topic will be practical tools to implement Laudate Deum. And our speakers will be telling what they are doing in their local areas to put that into practice. So on April 4th, will be our next webinar. Look out for news in your inbox. Thanks once again, everyone for joining us and hope to see many of you soon in the community meeting. Have a great rest of your day.